My name is Jesse L. Lumsden. I'm a pretty competitive person. I wasn't popular as a kid, but I was a pretty good athlete. I went away to private school in grade 11, and when I came back in grade 12, most of the people didn't know I had left. Hobbies include fishing, hunting, shooting my bow at the archery center, playing the guitar a little bit. I really like my wolf shirts. I have a very vast collection of wolf shirts. If I, if I wasn't bobsledding, I'd still be playing football. I love football because it's the ultimate team sport. When I started playing football, I played football when I was eight years old, and then my parents took me out until I got to high school. My dad's named Neil Lumsden. He played football for the Ottawa GGs, went on to play in the CFL, won three Grey Cups with the Edmonton Eskimos. My goal was to go play football in the NCAA, and they didn't want me. I had a coach tell me I was the wrong color to play running back in the States, and it was a little frustrating, but it didn't deter me from what I was trying to do. Starting in 2007, I had three season-ending shoulder injuries. And then in 2011, I had a knee reconstruction. There came a point when I started to doubt my own abilities. If you have, you know, 10,000 out of 20,000 people telling me that, you know, I'm fragile as a football player, injury prone, it, it's a pretty heavy burden to bear. My dream to play football still burned pretty deep inside me. Before that, I had gone on a man tracker and then signed with the Calgary Stampeders. Uh, I got the opportunity to play against my former team, Hamilton Tiger Cats. The next week was the last regular season game. We were playing Winnipeg, and I went to chase down the guy who was running it back to the end zone, and I went to tackle him out of bounds, and when I did, my foot got stuck in the ground, and his weight came on top of me, and I blew my knee up. I knew football was done uh, at that exact moment. After my second shoulder surgery, I got a, uh, an email from Matt Hindle, who was the NSO at the time, inviting me to come out to a bobsleigh camp. And I told my dad about it, and we were standing in the kitchen, and he said, why not give it a shot? You never know what can come out of it. And I looked at it just as that, as a training opportunity to become a better football player. My first time competing in bobsleigh was at Canadian Champs, a month after I had tried pushing a sled for the first time. And yeah, I loved it. Fast forward about seven or eight months, and I'm at the top of the hill in Italy, racing four men. Push my heart out, and as a side crewman, you have to step over yourself to get onto the bale to load into the sled. Well, I stepped over too hard. My foot bounced off the sled. I went headfirst into the sled, my legs sticking straight up in the air. In hindsight, everybody had a good laugh at after because they saw the video. Bobsleigh is exhilarating. People have described it as a roller coaster that goes off the rails. People have described it as a being put in a garbage can and rolled down a hill. I love bobsled because it's given me an opportunity to continue to compete. Uh, it's given me an opportunity to represent my country. It's a great team sport and it's an adrenaline junkie's dream. A typical day at the track for us is we will load the sleds up into the trucks, make sure we have all the equipment we need, tools, runners. We'll prepare the sled to slide, put the runners on, uh, do some dry loads, which is loading into the sled on uh, a stable, still surface, just working on our timing. My job as a two-man brakeman is to get the sled going to maximum velocity and pull the brakes once we go through the finish line. My job as a four-man crewman, as a left side pusher, is to get the sled going from the first zero to 15 meters as fast as possible, and then to get in behind the pilot and to make myself as small as possible and not pull the brakes at the end. Training for bobsleigh was very similar to training for football. The comparison I say now is I was training for bobsleigh my whole life without knowing it. It's a lot of power and speed, strength, based uh, exercises and then you train as a, as a sprinter as well. So a lot of sprint work, a lot of track, track work. Also here at Windsport we have the ice house facility, which is the only practical way we can work on ice in the summertime. Having facilities like this to train at, to prepare, is so important and vital for all of our athletes' success. My favorite Olympic memory is walking in the opening ceremonies, Vancouver 2010, and being on my dad's shoulders at the 88 Olympics. Pierre and I finished fifth in the two-man, and Pierre, Neville Wright, Justin Cripps, and I finished fifth in the four-man. We all expected better. We all expected to be on the podium. My expectations for the, the Sochi Olympics is to win. The track is not extremely fast. It's not an extremely vertical track. It doesn't have a, a large vertical drop. Our job as crewmen will be very, very important. I don't know if I'll ever have closure as an athlete. So I'll always want to continue to do more and be better and try things. 
I don't think I'm afraid of anything. If I've, I've gone through a lot, ups and downs throughout my life, and failure could be one of them, but I've dealt with it a number of times before. It's something that you can't be afraid of anymore. If, it's, if that's looming in the back of your head, you'll never, ever get to where you're trying to go. The last thing I do before going down the bobsled track is a phrase that we say as a team. The phrase we say is strength and honor. My ultimate goal is to stand on the podium with my team and sing the national anthem.